I'm still on my quest to find the perfect Plex Media Player, something that hits on a few different very important points to me. And as you have seen in previous videos, I've been playing around with Azul Byte 3 as an HTPC, utilizing either a Kodi build or a Plex embedded OS option. Now, if you wanna see more information about some of the stuff that I've tried out, check out the cards above. But in this video, I'm gonna focus on the remotes or more importantly, utilizing my favorite remote with now potentially a favorite player. And I said before that I wanted to get into a Harmony remote, but honestly, you get the one you really like and it's kind of expensive. So I decided to try something a little bit different first, just to see if I could get it to work. And by different, of course, I mean cheaper. This is like $22. What's up YouTube, Jason here with Bite My Bits, and in today's video, I am talking about Flirk. F-L-I-R-C, Flirk. Flirk is basically a USB device that plugs in that allows you to use any remote you want to, assign different keys to do different things from anything, as long as it has an infrared blaster, and uh, control supposedly anything you want to control with it. I find this actually a very interesting concept, especially because, like I said, it's like $22, $23. It's not really much that comes with it. I mean, literally it's a box with a spot. You plug it in, you download the software from the website. So there's, I mean, as far as I know, there's nothing else included in this. It's just, that's it. Simple. Now, full disclosure, I still have some tinkering to do. I've been messing with this for the better part of maybe off and on a couple hours. And like I said, all you have to do is download the software and you can go in and you can customize each button individually from whatever remote you wanna use it with. Now the Xbox One media remote that I have is by far my favorite remote. I, I love this thing, everything about it. It's simple, it has all the buttons you need and when you move it, it lights up. So if you're like in the dark, it'll allow you to find it very easily just by like hitting or something. I know it's kind of weird, but this has literally just been one of my most favorite, simplistic, easy to use remotes. And that's pretty much one of the main reasons why I still use my Xbox One as my daily Plex media player. But I do want to get into and use Plex Embedded OS as a daily driver, or maybe Kodi. I'm not really sure yet. Kodi with the uh, Plex add-on, of course. And in order to use the remote that I like the most with my new HTPC Plex Embedded OS build, well, that's where Flirt comes in. To set the thing up, it's super simple. You just plug it into your computer, then you go to their website, you download the Flirk management software, install that, and run it. From here to complete your setup of your remote programming, you just click on the button you want to program, point the remote you want to use at the Flirk, and push the corresponding button. So if you want to program left, you hit left, right, you hit right, etc. This process of programming is fairly straightforward, fairly simple, but in my experience, albeit somewhat limited. I feel like it's a little, I don't wanna say confusing, but I think it takes a little bit of tinkering to get right. For example, I went through and I, I was choosing different remotes, trying to find the amount of buttons that I wanted to be able to use, you know, from the Xbox One remote. And I, I found myself bouncing between like the Xbox 360 remote, those standard media controls. I even tried out the Kodi controls. And pretty much what it comes down to is that some buttons work the way they should and some buttons don't. Basically what I was doing was programming these things, trying it out with the Plex embedded OS and you know, maybe sometimes the left button didn't work like it was supposed to. I tried it with the Kodi controls, I tried it with the generic media controls and that ended up fixing it. So then because I know it has a Kodi control remote option in the software, I actually went back to Kodi, installed Kodi on that little HTPC, that Azul Byte 3 that I've been tinkering with and tried it out that way. And a lot of that worked, the volume worked, a bunch of stuff worked, but it doesn't work exactly how I would like it to at least not yet. I know this video is sounding less of a review and more of an overview of some of the features, mainly because I'm really still kind of figuring it out. Now the Flirk USB thing I've gotten figured out for the most part, but I have to figure out what the best operating system is to work with Flirk. And by that, I mean what operating system is going to give me the most usage with the most control with any remote. Things like powering down the system or using that device integration through HDMI cables that allows me to control the volume of my surround sound by just utilizing the volume up and down button on my remote control through the HTPC. I can do that with the Xbox One, but I haven't figured out how to do that with the HTPC. As far as the Flirk USB device, 
I think it works as intended. I mean, you program the keys, you hook it up, and uh, it just kind of works. You don't really need any software after you get everything set up. My only wish, though, is that with the software, and hey, maybe somebody out here has a Flurk and they found a way to do this, uh, I wish that I was able to add a controller. Like for example, you can go through and you can customize like the Xbox 360 remote and like those options. But what I would like is actually drop down for the Xbox One media remote, one that has all the standard keys and I can just program the entire thing to the Flurk, you know, little USB tool and every key here would be mapped as it was intended to be. If I could do that, that would be awesome. I kind of Googled around and tried to see if there's a way to add on controllers or something like that, but I didn't find anything. So I kind of wish that maybe Flirk would have like an option for users to create their own profiles or controller profiles and maybe upload those, maybe be like a community crowdsource type of deal. Because I feel like if you do that, then they're going to have a lot of options. A lot of people are going to add on, you know, their remotes, their favorite remotes. They're going to go through and do the legwork for Flirk and, you know, get that added and, and created perfectly or as perfectly as possible to work with a bunch of different devices. But until then, it's kind of hit or miss. Uh, right now, what I'm using is uh, the, the generic settings, the base settings where you have like your up, down, left, right. And then I went down to the media controls where you can have your play, pause, and skip. I think I'm going to dabble back into the Kodi controls itself, but I don't think that, that worked exactly the way I liked it. So, you know, it, it's one of those things. You have to tinker, you have to play. It's like trial and error and then see what works best for you. But the good news here is that you can save your profile each time. So if you want to try a different configuration, you could always load up your old configuration if something didn't work as good as the previous version. And there are a lot of drop down options, a lot of things that you can pick from in order to trial and error your way into hopefully a fully functional HTPC controlled, you know, remote combo deal. Like I said, I'm still tinkering with the operating system, tinkering with the settings for the remotes and the Flurk and all that other stuff. So this is definitely a work in progress, but I do want to say Flurk is pretty awesome. Allowing you to use any remote for any device is a pretty badass idea. So guys, if you want to check out Flurk, I will link down below. I just wanted to share my experience, show you what I've done, and hey, maybe somebody out there will find it as useful as I am finding it now. So as always, guys, thank you for watching, like, and subscribe below, and have yourself a good day.